Happy Sunday, my friends. I'm so glad that you are here. Let's take a look at the project and the supplies for today. Um, so down here on my desk, look at this, look at, look at this gentle, gentle, oh, I just love her. I just love her. She's so good. And the layers, there's a lot of layers, believe it or not. They're light, very light layers. So wait till you see. Um, so supplies are very, very simple. Um, I, so the window is actually, it is actually, uh, it had shutters too. I didn't want the shutters for this piece. Um, and this, this image will be in the subscriber resource libra library for you for free to download. Um, I am working on a 10 by 10 cradle board uh, panel. I have some other um, vintage papers that I used that are part of a collage pack. They'll be listed in the supplies. All the supplies will be in a link down below in the YouTube description box. So those collage papers will be on sale. This uh, window is free for you in the subscriber resource library. Um, the stencils that I used, I used my vintage wallpaper 2 stencil. I You can barely see them. They're there. That's such a pretty stencil. This is so old and so gunked up. I need a new one. I need, <laughs> there's no cleaning this at this point. And then I used my Inky Leaves um, stencils. And those, again, will all be listed. Um, I actually printed them on tissue paper. I, I painted on them and then stamped them down onto my, actually not tissue paper, rice paper. Uh, you could do tissue paper too. It's the, it's almost the same, but I knew that I would get a little bit whiter, kind of milkier background with the rice paper, and that's kind of what I was going for. Um, so papers, I put ev all of my initial papers down with my Liquitex fluid matte medium, and the reason I did the fluid matte medium is because it it tends to wrinkle the papers more, and I wanted some texture. Um, and then. I printed out my quote on regular paper and I put that down with Matt Joe. The paints that I used, uh, I used uh, raw umber. Uh, this is a high flow, golden high flow raw sienna. Did that kind of mix up there. I did some olive green and then I did, of course, gesso. And I have some opera rose, which was, it's a like a a fantastic neon, mm. just a touch, tiny mix of it in with some, um, this is red ochre. Uh, it's like a burnt sienna. It's almost exactly the same. This is uh, Soho's Rose Matter. Again, it's magenta. It's like a magenta. So, um, and then gesso, I'm looking at my palette. That is, that is really it. Um, I used a lot of my fingers. Um, and then I used my um, charcoal pencil. I did all my shading with my charcoal pencil and my line work and then a black soft pastel for around the edges. And that is it. Very, very simple project, um, but very, very easy. Simple, easy, and very, very meaningful, I should have said. <clears throat> um, so um, I hope you stick around for the conversation at the end because I kind of talk about my inspiration and all that good stuff. So let's get creating.
hello loves and happy Sunday to you. What a sweet, sweet creation we made today. Oh, I just positively love her. Didn't start out the, this, it didn't end up the way that I thought initially what it would look like, but um, I, I love it. And it always ends up in just the right place. So let's just take a look. <clears throat> this beauty here, um, I really wanted this to just feel, um, I really was going to do a lot more grunge and maybe a little bit more black. But once I started going, I, I had this real kind of ethereal feeling and I just wanted to continue that layer. And um, I like the, the um, contrast between the kind of grungy window and the um, kind of really soft layers, all the flowers and the initial layers that I put down peeking through. I just love her. Love, love, love it. Um, went over all the supplies at the beginning of the video um, and a couple of things today today when you see this video today will be the last uh, opportunity for you to get the early bird pricing for the fabulous funky flowers um, so you can take advantage of that and then I will also have in the um, uh, all the supplies of course will be listed down below in the blog link along with that um, I will have I'm trying to think did I put will I put it on the blog I'm not exactly sure the art summit I'm talking out loud right now the art summit um, is also still taking signups if you I'm just throwing out opportunities for you to find some creative spaces um, depending on what fits for you and your budget and all those kinds of things. I'm a teacher. Um, there's over um, 40 artists in the Art Summit and it's for the month of February and then you'll have access to that um, for life and so uh, you can take advantage of that if you want. So fabulous funky flowers and Art Summit um, for you if you so choose. All right, so the meaning for this piece um, came again from my readings. Um, you know, my morning time, I will take some time to kind of read and journal and just kind of center myself and pray and whatever. I mean, it's different every morning. Um, and um, I've just been truly enjoying Morgan Harper's uh, Nichols book, um, all along you were blooming and I turned to this page and it talked about I didn't use her quote exactly but it talked about because um, my quote here says the garden of your life the place where beauty lives tend it well and often and she talked about fear and how um, fear can is a weed and um, well I think I know I definitely de deal with fear all the time. Um, I think we all different do uh, deal with different things. And um, it ebbs and flows too. There are certain things that crop up in my garden, in my garden of life, um, that if I don't pay attention to them, it chokes out the beauty. And as I was thinking about that and writing about it and all of that, I, I could see this garden picture with this window of me like looking out over the garden, reflecting about life and that kind of thing. So that's, that's how this piece came to be. And I know for me that oftentimes when life gets crazy and busy and all of those things, which it does a lot, right? Um, and we're truly distracted by world events and different things like that, um, it can be hard to focus on our own beautiful garden, on tending the weeds inside of us, on um, saying enough is enough or, or taking the action to eliminate the thoughts, the deeds, the choices, those kinds of things in our own beautiful garden. And before I know it, I know for me, before I know it, um, I can't see the beauty. It's because the weeds are choking it out. And I've allowed the negative and the ungrateful and all of those things that I can call weeds in my beautiful garden. Um, 
I can allow those to choke all of the glory of it out. And so that's why I put down the garden of your life, the place where beauty lives. Tend it well and often. Check in with yourself. That's one of the the things that I do often as I create is I check in with myself and I know I've said it before. I ask myself, what do I need today or before I create? And um, sometimes I do that better than others. And when it's crazy and when things are hard and when life happens and we're just all busy, sometimes we forget those things. So tend to your garden. And that could look like a million different things. It could look like rest. It could look like um, a vacation, or I don't know if we can all vacation yet, but it could look like a walk around the block. It could look like time with your kids or your grandkids or your significant other um, or your whoever. It could be a Zoom call. Um, Tending your garden You know what gives you joy. You know it. And sometimes we ignore it because we have to and life happens. But then we need to check in. We need to go to our garden. We need to weed some things out. We got to bring the tools out. We got to spend some time there because if we don't, the flowers don't bloom. Same with our own lives. If we don't tend, to those critical things that make us bloom, that help us see beauty, that help us see gratitude and hope and joy and love and all the beauty that is actually in our lives and and we allow and we don't allow all of the other things like all the other weeds come in and crowd that out. Um, we will have this beautiful garden. But if we don't tend to it, um, we lose sight of how beautiful it is. And pretty soon it's overrun with all the weeds. And so as I read that, her one of her quotes um, or poems, it was a little bit different than that, but that's where I went with it. Um, my beautiful garden, I need to do some tending. And I know that, and it's a constant thing. And some seasons are better than others. And we have to realize that and allow ourselves some grace and some rest and some time to tend to the weeds of our life. That is my inspiration for this piece today and for you. And I hope that you, your garden is blooming and that you, maybe it's not blooming, but there's buds happening. I'm thinking about winter because it's so cold here and this, it's so much snow. I so want some flowers and some warmth. Um, maybe you can see the buds blooming. You can see them starting to come out of the ground. Um, there's still tending that needs to happen in the winter season too. And so tend to your garden, my friend. All right, my loves, have a wonderful Sunday. May it be restful and peaceful, and may you always, always know that you are loved. 